Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. You know, every time I forecast a heat wave, I get questions about how the weather is going to impact the coronavirus. If temperatures are in the hundreds, is the virus itself going to be killed? Well, I am not a doctor, I'm a meteorologist, but I did take some time uh, to talk to Dr. Ruth Berggren. She's an infectious disease specialist with the Long School of UT Health San Antonio, and she actually had a lot of great insight. Let's take a look. We all had hoped that we'd get a reprieve from the virus with the heat, and it's been pretty hot here. And as all of us have seen, unfortunately, cases in San Antonio are spiking. So that theory has not borne out. Um, we do know that the virus can survive on surfaces, sometimes for hours and sometimes even days. We also know that it prefers a cooler environment but um, what happens in actuality is that when people are outdoors and it gets really hot, they go, they go back inside um, into cooler air. And so there's, there's really been no, no benefit to us uh, from this hot weather. And in fact, countries where there's a lot of heat, you know, in Africa, they're also seeing COVID-19. So we, we really can't expect the weather to help us with the COVID pandemic. It's going to be our behaviors that are going to help us. Thankfully, we don't get it. It doesn't get that hot here. Um, you know, if if the virus were on the surface of a jungle gym, you know, metal bar out in our heat, you know, it wouldn't last very long. That's for sure. Um, but that's not how the virus is primarily transmitted. We care about surfaces, but we care more about respiratory droplet transmission. And that's going to happen when two people are within six feet of each other for greater than 15 minutes. And it's, it's, you're better off if you're outdoors, not because of heat, but because of the air circulation. We're trying to get everybody to think about the three P's, prevent, protect, and abide. And um, what you want to do is prevent others from getting sick, uh, your grandma, your grandpa, and you do that by covering up your own mouth and nose with a mask knowing that there's a lot of asymptomatic spread, you know, washing your hands, keeping six feet apart from other people. But we want people to also think about creating a small social bubble. So you have really defined who are the people that you're gonna be interacting with and close to during this time. And that's really gonna be mainly the people that are in your household. If you do have to leave your home for any reason, bring the mask with you. You don't have to wear it if you're outdoors exercising, but if you get into a crowded area outdoors, you want to have the mask and you want to put it on right away. And the last thing, the last P is provide. So what are we asking people to provide? We want you to provide information if you get a phone call from a contact tracer. The contact tracers are really, really important because they're the ones that identify who's sick and then who, who's going to get sick next. And they go find those people and put them in quarantine or ask them to quarantine. So if you get a phone call or a text message from area code 210 with the prefix 270, please answer that call, return the call or answer the text message so that you can provide the information that we need to help control the pandemic. The COVID could start with a sore throat and a cough, but the difference is gonna be fever. You're not gonna have fever from Saharan dust. You will have fever from COVID. And it's also um, how sick you feel. So Saharan dust maybe not doesn't make you feel great, but it's not going to make you feel achy and bad all over your whole body. So if you just cough, don't freak out. Think, hmm, am I having other symptoms that go along with COVID? Have I lost my sense of taste or smell? You know, do I have a fever? Do I feel sick and achy all over? Am I short of breath? If the answers to some of those questions are yes, then you should worry about COVID. If the answer is no, you're probably just experiencing some seasonal allergies or some reaction to whatever is in the air. It was so great to have Dr. Bergeron on with us and answer those questions, which we just don't know a lot of the answers to. So she helped to clear things up. That segment was actually aired on our new show. It's called KSAT Explains, where every week we take one topic and we explain it. KSAT Explains It. It's an all digital show, so you can find it at KSAT.com. New episodes drop every Thursday. Isn't that interesting, Max and Stephanie, the thing she said? I particularly found it interesting that it would have to be 133 degrees outside for the virus 
to yes. to be killed. It just doesn't get that hot here in San Antonio. No, Antonia. no, but still she, you know, talking about what it was still a challenge, you know, with it being hot, people are not going outside as much. So Absolutely. It's interesting to hear that. Absolutely. You know. And today is going to be a hot day, just not 133 degrees. We're going to be looking at a high temperature close to 100.